I'm gonna show you how we made this entire shot using just After Effects and 3D models from rendercrate.com. For these shots, we used stock elements from footagecrate.com, but I'm gonna be focusing on the 3D assets today. Firstly, I need to 3D track my scene. Once the tracking is done, I can select some points where I want the center of my scene to be. Then I could just right click it and select set ground plane and origin, and then right click it again and select create solid and camera. Now any new 3D layer that I add to my shot is going to appear right in the center when I set the position values to 0, 0, 0. Now that you know how it works, I'm just gonna delete those solids and I will keep the footage layer and the 3D camera layer. Now I can drag and drop a 3D missile into my scene and set the X, Y, and Z position to zero. This GLB file is from rendercrate.com. You can also import OBJs, but I find GLBs work a lot better. The scale of this model is huge and that is why we are inside of the missile. We don't actually want that, so I'm gonna scale down the missile to 4%. When I hit play, I can see that my missile is perfectly tracked into my scene. To give myself some better control over my 3D objects, I'm gonna create a new null object and make it 3D. Then I'll set the position values to zero and I can parent my missile to that null object. This way, when I move, scale, and rotate my null, all of the missiles in the scene are going to change with that null. Now I can use this null to position and rotate my missile until it points directly at me as I catch it in midair just like Magneto. I wanna give this missile some life by adding some rotation. So I'll select it, toggle down the Z rotation, and then use the expression time times 60. This is gonna just make it rotate forever and ever. Another neat trick is to apply a slider effect to my control null, and instead of time times a number, I can use time times and then pick with that slider. That way the rotation speed of my missile will change with the slider number. This is the fastest way to see updates and make tweaks without having to open up that expression. However, I want a lot of missiles. If I create a bunch of clones of the exact same missile and they're all rotating the exact same speed, it's gonna look bad. I want them to look unique. The best way to do that is by using expressions. Thankfully, there's this little known tool called ChatGPT, and my friends, this is the way AI should be used. Instead of trying to write my own complex expression, I'm just gonna ask ChatGPT to do it for me. And this is what it came up with. Basically, this expression lets me input a min and max speed, and then it randomizes the rotation speed of each of the missiles based on where they are in the layer stack. So basically every new missile I add is gonna have a slightly different rotation and randomize the rotation of every existing missile. I'm gonna go ahead and paste that entire expression in the description below if you wanna use it for any of your projects. Now I could just create a bunch of clones of my missile and they're all gonna have slightly different rotations. This one simple trick is going to help to keep them from looking identical. Now we have the missiles rotating randomly, but I want more variations in the missiles themselves. So I'll launch the render crate extension where I can find these amazing models in the weapons category. I can also search for them, but honestly, I just really like browsing this category. It's got cool swords, and ninja weapons, guns, and of course, some missiles. If you already have anything downloaded, you can just hit that plus icon and if you want to download new ones, well, just hit the download button by each model. I'll download a couple of these missiles and rockets. They're all fantastic, super high quality 3D models. After I've collected my favorite models, I could select one of my missile layers and then alt drag one of my new missiles onto that layer. That's going to replace the missile in my scene with one of the downloaded models. It's going to also keep the position and rotation data. This is going to let me select and adjust my missiles very quickly and very easily, and let me art direct the scene, giving me a little more creative control. After Effects can now light 3D scenes with HDRIs. There are many HDRIs available on the Rendercrate plugin, but for now, I'll use this Park HDRI I found on ambienttextures.com. It matches my scene really, really well. I'll just drag that HDRI into my composition and disable the visibility. Now I can just create a new environment light layer and I'll call it HDRI. In that HDRI layer, I'll click the Source dropdown and select the Park HDRI. Now it's affecting the light on my 3D missiles. 
Here, I'll just increase the intensity. My missiles are starting to look more believable, but they look a little flat to me, so I'll just add a sun to give them a little more contrast. I'll do this by creating a new light and making it a point light with a warmish tone. Here, I could just play with the intensity and position until it looks right. This was a very busy parked environment, but Nico did a really good job of framing everybody out, except for this one dude and his dog that somehow slipped into the scene. We could, of course, just paint them out, but I like the idea that they're just on a nice walk and they see Magneto saving the world, catching these missiles and saving them. So right now all the missiles are pointed down, but I want them pointed directly at me, kind of like they're surrounding me. So I'll just make some minor rotation adjustments. I can also use some of these sideways fog elements from footagecrate.com and place them where my missiles are positioned. So it kind of looks like exhaust is coming out of those missiles. To add a little more contrast to the sky, I'm gonna use this smoke element from Graphics Crate as a 3D layer, and I'll just push it way back in Z space scale it up and set all the material options to zero so that it doesn't catch any of the 3D lights. Then I could just do some light masking feathering and drop the opacity until it sits nicely in the scene. Now this is looking pretty good, but I feel like the missiles are too static. I want them to feel like they're kind of coming in and then hitting resistance and slowing down a little bit. To do this, I'm gonna create some position keyframes. First, I'll create a keyframe where I want my missile to end up, drag that keyframe later in the timeline, move to the beginning of the timeline, and then move the missile backwards. That way, my missile moves forward to its stopping point. It's looking okay, but right now it is moving linearly. I want it to dramatically ease in. I can do this by going to my graph editor and make sure I'm on the edit value graph. I can't edit these yet with little handles, so I have to right click on my position and go to separate dimensions. It's a very weird little quirk of After Effects. Now I can alt click and drag, and that's gonna give me these handles so I can create this very intense easing curve. From here, I'll just tweak this graph until the motion feels exactly how I want it to. I'm not gonna do this for all of the missiles because I don't want them to feel like they're all arriving at the same time. I'm only gonna do this for a couple more of the missiles, and I'm also gonna give some a little rotation as if they are like bouncing off of this invisible barrier. That way they go from this kind of like very intense directional feel to suddenly being like, poof, like flown away. The last thing I need are some shadows. Now there is a shadow catcher that comes in the new version of After Effects, but as you can see, it leaves something to be desired. Now, hopefully this gets better in the future. Now I messed with a bunch of settings to try and get the shadow catcher to work, but unfortunately it never quite did. If you have any recommendations or solutions, please let me know in the comments below. In the meantime, you can just render out some fake shadows yourself, creating a black and white mat of a spinning rocket and 3D tracking it to your scene. Because these rockets are floating up in midair, you don't have to be 100% accurate with your shadow. David did come up with another technique that is extremely effective but it is a bit more advanced so I'm gonna let him break it down for you. So for this effect I'll essentially be creating a flat view of the shadows and projecting that onto the ground. First I'll pre-compose all of the missiles into their own composition and collapse the transforms. Then I'll duplicate the comp and call it shadow map. In the shadow map composition, I'll make a new camera and move it far below the missiles, placing it in the opposite direction of the sun. To compensate for the distance, I'll zoom in and reframe, making sure to fill out most of the composition window, but leaving some space for any animation. Back in my main comp, I'll make the shadow map a 3D layer and align it with the floor in my scene. Then change the scale and position till it roughly matches the missiles. Objects close to the ground tend to cast a sharper shadow, whereas further away things cast a softer shadow. I'll simulate this by going to the shadow map, duplicating the missiles comp and call it depth. Then I'll add a 3D channel extract and adjust the settings until the white point represents the missile closest to the ground. Once I get it to have some accurate depth, I'll hide the depth comp and add a compound blur to my missiles layer and select the depth layer and effects and more from the blur layer dropdown. Right now the values are all backwards, so I need to invert the blur. To get rid of the weird outline, I'll add a mini max effect to the depth layer and place it below the 3D extract and expand the radius. 
If I disable the depth view, I can see the outline has disappeared and my shadows are appropriately soft. From here I can add a black tint to the missile layer for the dark shadows. The best part is that if I move my original missiles around, the shadows will change accordingly. All I have to do from here is parent the shadow map to the control null and it's finished. I am so excited that After Effects finally has some 3D abilities. This is massive and I hope that it continues to advance and scale into the future. Using it with the models from RenderCrate is a dream come true, and I'm so excited that we have the new RenderCrate extension. Do you have any other superpowers that you want us to cover? Let us know in the comments below. We need some good ideas, and I want to hear from you. We use stock elements from Footage Crate, we use 3D assets from RenderCrate, and we use some awesome HDRIs from Ambient Textures. If you want any of those, I'm going to link to everything we used in the description below. That's it for today. Hope you enjoyed. Later, creators.